Hello, my name is John Richards with the Electric Power Research Institute, and I'm here to talk with you today about earthquakes and some high-frequency testing that we're doing of components at nuclear power plants. Earthquakes come in a variety of different sizes and characteristics. Some of them shake back and forth about one or two times a second. Others shake back and forth much more rapidly, say 20 times a second or 10 times a second. And those kinds of motions have a different impact on the plant. The ones at very low frequencies have large displacements, and so they tend to lead to stresses in buildings and piping. The high frequency kind have very low displacements, and so they're not damaging to the buildings. But there's some chance that they might uh, cause small electrical components to misoperate. This part is called a relay, and it is the kind of part that may be susceptible to high-frequency earthquake motions. It is basically an electrical switch, and it has a magnet here in the middle, and when the magnet is turned on, it pulls these contacts down, and it changes state. In an earthquake, what we're concerned about is that these things might bounce, called contact chatter, due to the vibration motions. So the way this works, is the electricity is, comes in through here and it runs through this part and as it's set up now, out this side. And when it's turned on, the electricity runs out through here, down through this lower part. And that's how it controls systems inside the plant. And so we will be wiring this up with power set to the coil and electricity running through the contacts, all wired up so that we can monitor the part as it's shaken to make sure that it stays where we want it to stay. We have several types of test machines. This one can shake items in one direction and was used to perform a test called a sign sweep test. The white cylinder on the left side is similar to a large speaker cone. A sine wave with different vibration frequencies was used to vibrate the test components. In the following two videos, you will see one test vibrating at about 18 hertz and a second test vibrating at about 30 hertz. You will note that in the second test, the shake table barely needs to move at 30 hertz to produce high acceleration. This shows the difference in the kinds of vibrations that occur at lower frequency motions versus higher frequency motions. Here is another test machine that can simulate earthquakes in all three directions at the same time, front to back, side to side, and up and down. This allows us to more completely simulate the earthquake motions. To test larger items, we use a different kind of machine. This shake table has a 10 foot by 10 foot square tabletop and a weight capacity of 10,000 pounds. One item we've tested on the large shake table is this transfer switch which typically would be mounted on a wall in a power plant. There are a number of wires coming off the transfer switch. These are providing power to the switch and feedback for how hard the shake table and the switch are shaking. Here's that same transfer switch being tested with high frequency input motions. Again, the shake table test combines all three directions of movement as well as a blend of high frequency earthquake motions. This chart shows the distribution of the kind of parts we are testing in this program. The entire high frequency program will test about 150 parts. Many of them are relays that are used to control systems in the plant. Others are pressure sensing devices that are used to monitor fluid pressures throughout the plant and provide information to the control systems. And still others are circuit breakers, some of which are similar to breakers you would find in your own house while others are very large breakers called switchgear, which operate at 4,000 volts. A preliminary review of the test results for the first 100 parts is shown in this chart. This is showing that 67% of the parts tested operated properly at levels as hard as the shake table could shake. Another 6% operated successfully at levels that are almost that high. Both of those together are at levels that are higher than we would expect from any earthquake at the nuclear plants. 
The last 27% of the parts had some sensitivity if we shook them hard enough. We are reviewing those results and comparing them to sensitivity of the parts under normal frequency testing levels. Over the coming months, we will be completing the remaining testing and going through a rigorous review process to document the results of each test. We will then also be reviewing it to draw generic conclusions from all of the testing and to provide a summary report of all the answers. After that, utilities will then review the report and evaluate the equipment in their plants using the insights from the tests to enhance seismic safety.